What's up, fellas? So this is my attic right here that we're about to go into because it's still a little chilly here in Louisiana. Like at night, it'll still get down into the high 40s. Well, last night it got pretty chilly in the house and I kicked the heat on because my kids were, well, my son doesn't talk, but my daughter and my wife were complaining that they were cold. And they said, can you kick the heat on just to knock the chill out? I said, yeah. So I kicked the heat on and it's blowing ice cold air. So now we're gonna go up here and see why it's doing that. Well, I'm sure you guys know how I feel about this. We have a Goodman air handler in the house that I'm living in. We have a ARUF 37, that's a three ton. Uh, one thing I wasn't thrilled about when I got it. now we're still renting because I don't want to buy yet. I want my business to be established five years before I buy. So I don't have any control over this, but the air, the condenser is a micro channel Lux air. So I figured that's what was going to be up here. But now that I'm up here and I see we have a Goodman, uh, I'm pretty confident. I know what's wrong with it. One or two things is going to be wrong. Either that little blower board is going to be bad or we're going to have a dead sequencer. So let me get this thing opened, and uh, I mean, I'll try, let me see if I can prop y'all up here. Y'all just gonna have to sit right there. They did, they forgot the two screws in the middle. Goodman has six screws, three on each side, and a lot of the guys that when they lose screws or whatever, they leave the middle ones out. Which, I mean, that'll work because like ICP, they they only have uh, two on each side, one at the top, one at the bottom, but. Goodman makes a pretty big air handler. Sorry, guys, I dropped y'all. All right, let me slide over here to the electrical compartment. Okay, so we have a... Uh, sorry, guys, we're at the electrical panel, uh, compartment now. We have a 15 kW heat strip. We have a contactor instead of a sequencer, and we have the uh, relay board. Basically, that's nothing but a damn fan relay that Goodman inter integrated into a board. You can replace it with a regular relay. I do carry these little boards though, for, just for ease of replacement. I've got about five of them on the truck because they're dirt cheap. They're, they're just as cheap as a relay. So I don't have control of the thermostat. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna jump this out. I'm gonna twist, yep, they got it right. Or I'm gonna put a jumper across red and white. Jumper. All right. Oh, we have, we have two contactors, y'all. I didn't see that top one, and that's, it's making a loud noise. All right, so we have 5KW running off the bottom contactor. This is 10KW. So we have 10KW running. But I bet you right here, we don't have 15. And we do. Uh, I'm thinking, I don't know, man. This is weird because we sure in the hell didn't have no heat when I kicked that thing on last night. So this is weird. I've got all 15KW working. Let me see. Yep, it's that top contactor buzzing. That's that's five. That's ten. Well, let's go to this one. That comes off the bottom contactor. It's working. And this one comes off the bottom contactor, and it's working. So all 15 kW is working. But I think I'm going to go ahead and change out that top contactor just to be safe. Because... comes out of here okay so this contactor gets its voltage uh first 
is what it looks like. That's where it gets the hot, and then it grabs the common from the from the top contactor. All right, so I had to move the plate that holds the breakers so I could get to that top screw because it was kind of cockeyed, but this will be a real easy replacement. But we had no heat last night. I mean, it was blowing. Is this float switch even hooked up? No, look, look at this. This That didn't even hook this float switch up. Oh, that's bull. I'm going to see if it's still good. If it is, I'm hooking it up because I don't want no damn water in my secondary pan. Let me ohm it out and see if it still checks out. Yep, it works. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist it around my meter leads, the wires, and then I'm going to lift the float switch. You see that? Should kill the meter. Yep. See that? Continuity's back. Continuity's gone. It's back. So the float switch works. So it's getting hooked up. All right. So basically, what we're going to do is we are going to unhook the pan switch from there and the other part of the pan switch from red and we're going to tie one of the red pan switch wires into one of the black ss2 wires and this is wiring them in series to where only one has to trip and then we'll tie the bla other black which it doesn't matter which where, whether you go here or here it doesn't matter we're just going to go here with it to the third to the red thermostat wire coming from the thermostat and then we're going to take the remaining red wire from the switch in the pan and go to the red wire that came with the air handler. And we're gonna trim some of that because that is a little much. There we go. Now I gotta get a wire nut for that. Uh, oh, looks like actually I need two wire nuts. That one's no good. All right, let me grab the contactor. All right, so we got the new contactor in. I had to put a new terminal, spade, stay con, whatever you want to call it right here because the other one was broken. Everything's wired back up. I got this thing. I got to put two more screws in it real quick. And then I'll be done with that. This is not lining up quite right. I'll just have to make a new one. I guess that's what they did. Yep. Pretty positive that's what they did. All right, so we got the contactor replaced. We'll grab two blue baby blue wire nuts, one for the heat for the white wire, and one for the uh, or is it just one that I need? I got nope, I need one for the red to red float switch and for the heat. So two more things we're gonna do here. One, we're gonna put these wire nuts on. 
And two, I'm gonna call my wife down in the house and make her put the heat on at the thermostat to make sure that the damn thermostat is sending a signal for heat because I jumped it from up here and everything worked. Now, last night, we put it on at the thermostat. Okay, so I got the wire nuts back on. So now, I'm gonna call my wife and tell her to turn the heat on from the thermostat. All right, well, it turned, it, it, it's a good thing I came up here because that stakecon was broken and that contactor was really making a hell of a racket, but it turns out that we have a bad thermostat because when the wife turned it on from the thermostat, all we got was fan, we got no contactors. It's one of those Pro One thermostats. It's got the little magnet on it where you can take the magnet off and put your name. I'll put a picture of it on the screen. Um, and I told her to smack it. So she she smacked it like three times and, I, and then I heard the contactors pull in and the contactors are currently pulled in and heating. So I'm gonna get a thermostat off my truck. I really wanna put a Wi-Fi stat on my house anyway, but I don't have the Wi-Fi stat that I want to put on here right now. So I'm just gonna pull a basic thermostat off my truck uh, for tonight and put that on and that'll be about it. All right, so I, I've had this thermostat sitting on the truck forever. It's actually been rolling around in a miscellaneous box. But I absolutely hate these damn thermostats. I don't use them anymore. Ari Michael, which is not located here in my town, carries my favorite Honeywell thermostat, the old Focus Pro 5000, the TH5220. It's my favorite damn thermostat. Now, the only reason I'm not putting that on my house is because I'm fixing to put a Wi-Fi, so I'm just gonna pop this on the wall for, for now because I'm gonna try out a T10 uh, Honeywell. Anybody out there that's had that has experience with the T10 Honeywell, let me know how you do it. The only problem is with Ari Michael, I got to call the, and these things are expensive. Ari Michael's charging me more for these. Ari Michael's charging me more for these than they are for these or these Emersons that I went to. I don't know if you guys, I really don't want to pull this pack out out, but oh, what the hell. And I had my sheet. I used to have my duels in one of these, but a bigger one. I di it did not work out good. I couldn't hold many. So I had my sheet metal man make me this box. But I'm low on capacitors right now. I'm actually going to go stock up this week. Let me pull this damn thing out of here real quick. Okay. So in here. So here we go. There, and I know some of you guys have been asking for a truck tour, and I'll get there, but here's a small, here's a, here's a sample. Okay, this is my favorite thermostat by Honeywell. When Honeywell got rid of this thermostat, I was very upset. The reason I like this thermostat is just because it's reliable, and it's a two heat, one cool. So I can do a straight cool system with this or program it for heat pump with emergency heat. This is not just a you know, one heat, one cool. So it's, you can hook a heat pump up to a one heat, one cool, but without the emergency heat. But with this thermostat, I can do it all. A regular straight cool system, or I can do a heat pump with emergency heat, and I like the way they look, and they're just a reliable thermostat. That's why it's my favorite. But the problem is, I have to get them from out of town because no one in Lafayette will stock these for me. They refuse to stock them. It's not them, it's the... There's their big dogs at the supply house are like, that's I we know Honeywell brought it back, but that's an old thermostat. We're gonna stock the new modern stuff. So this is what they're stocking. And I absolutely despise these damn things. I hate them. I've had nothing but trouble with them. I've had I've replaced a bunch of these. Um, some of them I've had great success with. So I have a couple of these right now, but they're hard to get because I got to get them from out of town. I just need to order a case when I get busy, and I'm going to do that. So I have these that I really like. This is the uh, Emerson 80 Series non-programmable one heat, one cool, because that's mostly what we have here is one heat, one cool. We don't have very many heat pumps here at all. But these I will always buy the TH5220 for the two heat, one cool. 
but I've had this one rolling around on the truck for a while because I stopped using these a long time ago and went to these and then ordered a couple of these. So uh, I'm going to put this on until I get my T10 thermostat again. Anybody that's used a T10 thermostat from Honeywell, let me know how you like it and is it worth it. I was using the Honeywell 9000, but there's some things about it that I don't like. So I'd like to know what you guys think about the T10. Let me know in the comments. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.